everyone this video we're going to create a cool effect of arts coming out of the user's mouth depending on how much they open their mouth a very cool effect so if you want to know how you can do this in spark Art studio watch this video and find out everyone in this video i want to show you how we can create a particle system in spark AR. A uh, particular system is a technique, and I'm going to read it as in Wikipedia, is a technique in game physics, motion graphics, and computer graphics that uses many uh, minute sprites, 3D models, or other graphic objects to simulate certain kinds of fuzzy phenomena. So uh, we can create different type of uh, visualization with this. Uh, so for example, we can use particle system to uh, uh, replicate uh, uh, a certain image for example many times and those images are animated in the 3d space and has a certain animation behavior uh, so for example in this uh, tutorial i will show you how you can create uh, hearts coming out from the user's mouth when the user opens open his or her mouth um, hearts will come out from it simple effect cool effect uh, for this we need to learn a few things first we need to learn how to use a particle system and the second thing is to uh, create an event uh, that causes um, the hearts to come out only when uh, the user opens uh, users open their mouth uh, basically all right so let's start all right, so uh, let's start and make our cool filter. So the first thing that I uh, did is what created in Photoshop an image of a heart and imported it into Spark RR. Uh, this you can either download from the web uh, or uh, create your own. Uh, I use a transparent PNG image of a white heart. The reason it's white because it makes it easy to decide uh, which color I want to use later on. Uh, because I just added to white, it's very easy to use a color picker uh, uh, to apply a very accurate color uh, to this image. I'm going to show it to you later on. Uh, I'm going to use no, compu uh, no compression here. Uh, all right, so let's begin. So there are two things we need to do. First of all, we need to create a particle system, and then we need to create an event. Uh, so only when users open their mouth, you're going to see the hearts. All right. So let's first of all start with the particle system. So in order to add a particle system into the uh, to Spark AI Studio to into the scene, we need to click here, add object, and then you can either scroll down or just write here particle. Start writing particle, and you're gonna see particle system. Right? Then you click insert or double click this one. And a particle will be added to the scene. As you can see, we have a particle. You can see kind of a something that emits uh, different s squares, uh, uh, and that's it. That's what you see by default. Uh, it's in a certain direction, but we're going to change all this uh, in a moment. Now, uh, because I want the particles to come out from the user's mouth. Uh, I want it to be assigned uh, to be aligned with the user's face. So to do this, as you know from other uh, videos that I made, we need to add a face tracker. So we go to add object, I'm typing face and add a face tracker. Now we have the face tracker. Now in order for the emitter to be to move with the head, we need to move the emitter to be a child element under the face tracker. So basically what we're going to do is just tap and hold the emitter and then drag it onto the face tracker until we can see a blue rectangle uh, border and then we're going to release the left mouse button. Just dragging it onto the face tracker. Now as you can see it's dent a bit to the side. This means that uh, the emitter is a child of the face tracker. If I click this arrow, you can see that the emitter is hidden because I can hide the children elements of the face tracker. All right. 
So let's continue. So what we need to do now, uh, there are several things. First of all, uh, the first thing you want to do is to assign the heart to be uh, instead of those squares. So to do this, because these are by default, so to do this, uh, we tap emitter and then we're going to see uh, the particle system properties on the right side here. This will be going to use this heavily in order to produce uh, the effect that we want. So the first thing I want to do is change the material of each one of those. Now this is going to be the same material for each one in one of those. So we only need to create one material. So to do this, we go to material section here and we're going to click the plus button to create a new material. As you can see on the left side in the assets uh, tree, we're going to have material zero. Let's double tap and call it heart or heart material. You can call it anywhere, anything you want. Just make it easier to recognize uh, the element, uh, the, uh, the material. If you have plenty of materials and many you know, materials in the list, it's probably uh, better if you give uh, them a recognizable name. Uh, right now, you know, if you have one, it doesn't matter, but when you build bigger projects filtered with many, many assets, it's good to have uh, uh, well-defined names there. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I want to choose a, a flat because I want to use this as a really plain color without any lighting effects, uh, lighting affecting the color of the, of the image. And then here under texture, I'm going to uh, tap here and then I'm going to see the list of my materials, but I only have one. So I'm going to choose heart. And as you can see now, instead of those uh, squares that we had before, we have these hearts, these images popping out. Cool. Uh, now I told you that I want to change the color. So because all of those hearts use the same texture, uh, <coughs> what I want to do is, uh, I, oh, sorry, I just need to change the color for the, this material and it will change for all of those hearts that you see there. So what I'm going to do is tap the color. Let's move this window here and I'm gonna, you know, let's put it reddish. That's something, maybe this one. This was this call. Click OK. All right, so we have those uh, red hearts. Uh, now what I want to do is uh, I want to come out of the mouth, right? So first of all, in order to get a better uh, understanding where uh, the, uh, the particle system is located relative to the mouth, uh, there are different ways to do this. I'm going to show you a simple way. Uh, you can do this also with coding, with a patch, um, patch editor, but uh, this I say for later videos, so I'm not going to put so many uh, more advanced topics in the same video. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, click the right mouse button on the uh, face tracker and click add and choose face mesh. Right, so uh, just keep in mind, look at this, this is how it look at the end. All right, and uh, here it doesn't look correctly but it gives you the face mesh will actually represent uh, the uh, replica of the user's face. Uh, so uh, in terms of curvature. So if I want to put something uh, near the mouth area, uh, the best, the easiest way for me to visualize it is just to have this face mesh uh, visible. Because if not, I'm going to show you, if it's not visible, you see, the image of this guy is actually a flat one. So I can know where the nose is, right? All right. Uh, so what we're going to do, uh, by the way, you see that the hearts are kind of uh, uh, overlapping each other and some are hidden. I'm just gonna make one thing. I'm going to the material and tap alpha test. And this will make sure that the transparent areas are transparent completely. Okay. Um, okay, so back to the okay, fast mesh, let's activate it. 
Okay, so I want to position the hearts uh, uh, near the mouth. Now, as you can see, the hearts are already, uh, when they are out from the emitter, they're already spread in the 3D space. So, if for example, right now you see they're, I'm going to animate it, they're moving the 3D space. So, even if the user moves their head, uh, the hearts uh, won't move with the head. Although they are under the face tracker, it's not like the image that I, uh, you saw in the previous tutorial that I made. Uh, the image won't move with it because they are confined to the wall space. As you can see here, it's called space under emitter. There is space world. Now I can change that. I can change it to local and then you can see the hearts moving with the head. Head, please move. You see? But now what happened when the chain world, world, the head moves, but uh, the hearts stay, uh, continue their path uh, relative to the world. But I want to have this one, so we're going to leave it here, and this is the default option. All right. So let's position uh, uh, the emitter near the mouth. So this is the pivot point of the emitter where the emitter actually emits those hearts uh, so let's position it I'm going to click here um, move and move button now it's blue it's active and I can move it down by left clicking with the mouse under this arrow up and down move it down I can control and hold the right click of the mouse button in order to rotate it so I can clearly see it from different angles because when we are dealing with 3D space, it's important uh, to watch the scene from different angles because sometimes it's kind of misleading. You can think that sometimes like it's right here, but it can actually be like far away. So it's important to inspect it from different angles. All right, so I need to move it a bit back on the Z axis. Mm, something like that. All right, yeah, it's a good place can see it's a good place so the hearts will come out from here now if we can play it we can see that the hearts are still going up right and uh, that's not what we want we wanted to uh, move uh, towards the camera uh, let me see where the camera is this is the camera this is the phone's camera we want the hearts to go this way here so let's do this All right, so in order to make it work, we need to go to the emitter properties. So we select the emitter and on the right side, we see the uh, particle system properties. Now we're a different option. What we want to do is uh, first of all, uh, let me see the birth rate, all right. Particle, this is uh, properties for a, uh, a single particle. We can see scale, lifespan, uh, We'll do have a tilt. I'm going <laughs> to neutralize the tilt so it'll be zero. <coughs> I'm going to remove this uh, billa boarding. And uh, I need to change uh, the angular, <laughs> the rotation, sorry. So I want it to appear so it's moving towards. I need to move it uh, to rotate it on the x axis. axis. So we're going to make it 90. All right, so right now, we let me just play it. You can see that the hearts are moving up. We want them to move towards the camera. So what we need to do is actually rotate uh, the particle system. So we're gonna stop it here. Now, I'm actually on the rotation right now. Now, if I rotate it using this uh, arc, I can see actually the rotation. One trick for this is temporarily uh, uh, using the space change to local let's play it again I have some hearts and then if i rotate it i can see the rotation you see now billa boarding here you see here is stacked which means that the particles will always face the user as you can see they're facing the user 
nice. And I can make some little adjustments. Looks pretty good. Now that I'm satisfied with this, I'm going to change it back to world. All right, let's play it. All right, this is kind of a fact that uh, shows uh, the hearts coming out of the moon. Now they're coming in a straight line because they're coming from a single point. You can see here emitter point. What I want to do uh, is make uh, make it so uh, like a line, like from the mouth, but little line. So we're gonna just point to line. Now this is probably too big, so we make the line shorter. To make the line shorter, so we're gonna change to length. Reduce it to. <coughs> Let me see. Looks nice. Looks nice. Now, there are other things we want to change, you see, the arts just disappear uh, after a short time. We can change this as well. Again, we go to the properties, uh, and this is for the particle here. Particle, you have a section called particle, and these are properties for a single particle. So we need to change the lifespan. Lifespan means uh, the time that the particle is visible, and then after this time, it vanishes. It's not visible. So we're going to change that. Two. Let's change it for uh, two. <coughs> sorry, two seconds. Let me see. After two seconds, it vanishes. Cool, right? Look at this area. You can see that how the effects will look like. Now let's hide the masks uh, for a second because we already position it. Nice. Let's go to the uh, particle. Okay. All right. Now this is uh, like uh, hearts coming out from the mouth, but it's always active, right? It's always active. And I want it to be so, uh, if you like this one, you can make it like this and, and use it in this in your effects. Uh, but I want to add something extra uh, so we can learn just a bit more um, in this video. Uh, by the way, other things we can do, uh, let's make a, a bit more changes. I want the heart to be different sizes. So there's an option here, you see scale, I can reduce the scale if it's too big and you want to make it smaller, you go to the under particle scale and we can change it so the hearts are smaller. But this, this is better because it doesn't block uh, the view as much, right? And we can also make, uh, make so uh, there's going to be a variation of sizes. So if you put here, you see percentage, if you put 15, this means the, the size would be either 15 from 15 uh, smaller than the value that you see in the scale to 50% uh, bigger than the size that you did. Let press enter and then you can see different sizes coming out. Small ones and big ones. It looks better in my opinion, right? Cool. Uh, also in terms of lifespan, you can also apply the same uh, uh, concept to the lifespan. So if I put, for example, 30%, uh, so it's 30% uh, uh, shorter time and longer time after two seconds that the particles will disappear. So some of them will disappear after two seconds, some after three seconds, some before two seconds. <coughs> and let's stay with this. Uh, and there are other options you can play with, by the way, before we jump up to the second part of this video uh, you can apply uh, for example spin you can apply spin 20 percent 55 angle you can see we can have spinning let's just reduce the speed it's too fast in my opinion so we go to speed and reduce the speed to uh, 0 0.1 a bit faster yeah this is nice so we can have a spin, we can have also a tilt. You can play with this, there are different option here. It depends on what you want to get. But we'll stay with this one. Something basic and cute. Okay, let's stop it. All right. Uh, all right, so the next thing we need to do is to apply, uh, to make so the hearts only appear when the users open their mouth. Let's do it. Now, how will you approach this one? So, uh, 
one thing you need to do is uh, what causing those hearts to appear is first of all they are visible right if i click here the emitter they are not visible they are visible so uh one option is when the users open the mouth and can hide the um hide the hearts all of them and show them when the mouth is open uh so when the mouth is closed uh, hide them when the mouth is open show them but this doesn't look that good uh, what i want to do is uh reduce the birth rate the birth rate based on how much the mouth is open so if the mouth is closed the birth rate will be zero if it's open a bit it will be higher the maximum will be 20 all right uh, so what we can do <coughs> here i want to show you if i put zero look what happens no hearts the other one that were before finished their pathing and now there's nothing because the birth rate is zero i give i give no birth rate to hearts anymore right if i put one see one every second if i put two two of them will come every second if i put 20 20 of them will come every second nice all right so what we're going to do let's stop it uh we're going to use uh the patch editor now the patch editor uh is a system that allows us to create some logic uh, uh add logic to our effect without actually knowing how to program i personally use uh the scripting uh, the javascript uh language in the scripting option scripting option because uh, i'm a programmer it's uh, easier for me to uh, follow the logic and manage my code uh, using this one but some of the things i do with patching i can combine those things but most of my code um, my logic in the project is done in scripting and i'm going to teach this also but in later videos so this one i'm going to do i'm going to do in a patch now the first thing we need to do is know uh, <coughs> how much the user uh, users open their mouth so we need something regarding mouth openness value it's not that complicated i'm going to explain <coughs> so the first thing we need to do is create uh go to the patch editor so to do this we're going to see view click view here and then show hide patch editor because it's not visible when you click it we're going to see it and we get this dotted area with a grid and uh we can extend it going here tapping left mouse button and extending it nice here we're going to do some work so the first thing we are searching for is thing regarding mouth openness now if you right click here you're going to get several options with the search option which is very uh, <coughs> convenient because you can easily find what you want so <coughs> we need to search something regarding to uh, uh, the mouth so we can type mouth but you only have here you can see mouth open but this is exactly what we need we need things relating to the mouth and as you can see this element uh, uh, i'm going to read it capture and open mouth using data from the face character in the scene good uh, and we have uh, page, uh, patch inputs the face and output uh, mouth open and mouth openness i actually want the mouth openness and it's a number uh, that represent how open the mouth is that's exactly what i need so we're going to use mouth open and when i click add patch to edit to the patch editor and we have mouth open now uh the mouth open uh, needs a face because it doesn't actually know uh, how to to which face to apply it now we already have a face and this is actually the face tracker it's assigned to a face uh, the first face in the scene and you can see it here tracked face face one now what we need to do is click on the face tracker let's double tap and call it face one all right and we're gonna tap and drag it into the patch editor and leave 
the left mouse button and drop it here. All right. Now we got a few nodes here, you can see. Uh, we don't get into details too much, but what we need actually is this thing. This little thing, face, you see? That's all you need to do. You need to click this arrow button that represents the face and drag it into the face arrow input here. Yeah, I'm just arranging it. All right. All right, so we have a face connected to the face input here. Nice. Now what we're gonna have is this one knows which the face is and it tracks the face. So it already knows in any given time the mouth openness. But we can't see the value yet because we need to output it outside. So we put it actually into a value. So I'm right clicking, tap in VA and we have value here. And I'm double clicking it. I can also double click to edit and I got a value node. Something that holds a value. Now it's zero by default. And we're going connect, connect the mouth openness to the value. I'm just tapping, dragging and dropping it on this arrow. Cool. So let's see first of all what happens. You see? Now let's take a closer look. All right. You see it changes. Now look at the scene here and you can see mouth is closed, it's zero. Now look, the mouth opens, it opens. So it depends on the number is smaller when the mouth is closer and when it's it's uh, open, the more it's open, the bigger the number is. See? Nice. That's what we need. We need this value to know how much the mouth is open. So we're going to keep this value here. So uh, what I told you is, let's go to the emitter back. And in the emitter, remember the birth rate? Now it's 20, right? But we need to change it <coughs> based on this value. Now, if you look at the birth rate here, we have a little arrow. What this means is that instead of using the value here, we can actually use the patch editor to input a value there. So the value goes inside here instead of using the default one that we put here. So in order to use this one, you see an arrow. If I put it, it's yellow. <coughs> I just need to click it. Click. Then look, we still have the 20 by default. And this is yellow. This means this is using right now is <coughs> modified in the page editor. You see, set in page editor. All right. So what we need to do here, take a look. <coughs> variation, we're still going to leave zero. I'm not going to change the variation. We can change it, but I won't going to change it in this, in this uh, video. But what I want to do is change the birth rate. You see, so I can input a number here. Now, uh, what happens if I connect the value of the mouth here right now? You see the number is zero point. <coughs> this means that I get very low input. I want something close to 20, from zero to 20. But here I get from zero something to close to one, right? So if I connect it here, look, I'm connecting two dots. Again, I'm going to show it to you, sorry. You tap here drag hold the mouse button and drop it lift the uh, you're gonna lift the finger from the mouse when you're over this arrow you see i don't get a lot right zero point something still zero so we don't get anything <coughs> even if the mouth open because there's not even one so none of the hearts are actually <coughs> sorry appearing so what we need to do is multiply this value multiply it so it'd be something from around 0 to 20. So again it depends on how much I, I think I'm going to about 30 <coughs> 30 35 uh, times the number here. So to do this right click 
and just do what I do. I do MU and I'm searching for multiply. You see multiply and add. <coughs> now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply this value so it'd be higher. Because if it's one, I'm going to see one heart every second, remember? If it's two, I'm going to see two hearts coming every second. Now, because the number is uh, is less than one, I don't see anything. So let's now, instead of putting this one here, I'm going to take the value and bring it to the first value. So we have this, I'm going to tap this line and click delete. I don't want it connected. Uh, forget what you see here is still 20 because I haven't changed the number right now. <coughs> you see so you can still see 20 here you can see that this is the value that we get 0 point something and I multiply it by 1 but I want to plot it by more so if I'm going to multiply it by 30 for example I'm going to get an output here and I'm going to connect it tap and hold and connect it to birth rate now the number should be much higher something you know between you can see between uh you get like two now it's zero let's see when the mouth is open close to 20 when the mouth is very very opened it's cool so that's what i want to do right uh so we're going to leave it like this what we did is there is a volume something between zero and zero and one something like that when the mouth is fully open uh, and because one uh, zero means uh, no hearts it's all hearts per second yeah it's this number will be how many hearts are going out per second from the mouth from the emitter uh, so i multiply this volume by 30 and i get some a number which is more than uh, one when the mouth is open and of course higher depends on how open the mouth is so more hearts will come up depends on how much you open the mouth i'm going to just increase the speed because i think it's better for this effect i'm going to put it three let's see maybe th three Let's see the effect. Nice. Maybe go. So now, if I want to increase it more, I can go here instead of 30, let's put 40. Now, more hearts will uh, come out from the mouth. <coughs> so, I'm just playing with it until I see something that I like. Cool. So, that's it. It's not too complicated. A few steps. I'm going to repeat it again. Uh, we added a mouth open uh, trigger, uh, which gives us also the value of the mouth openness. I connect created the volume node uh, that stores the volume, so I can see which, uh, which one it is. By the way, I can actually delete this one, <coughs> the volume, and add it here, so you get even less. So I just wanted to show you the volume before I made changes, so I created, but if I delete this one, and I connect this, uh, sorry, not this one, the mouth openness here to the multiply, it's still okay. Because I only need this value and multiply it. So it still works, even less nodes, right? And I add the face tracker, those three comes out by dragging the face onto the patch editor. We connect the face to the input face that the mouth open needs in order to know which face to uh, get the input from. For if you're using two faces, you need to drag another face and have it for the second face, but we're just using the first face in the scene. And then the mouth openness value goes to this box, and the volume we multiply it, and then the output volume goes to the birth rate. So the birth rate will be uh, the mouth openness, how much your mouth is open, multiplied by a number that I decide. If I want more hearts, I can increase this number. And then you have it. Take a closer look. You have a filter that when users open their mouth, arts coming out of their mouth. Cool fact, isn't it? So that's it. 
that's it for this video. I know for some it might be a lot, but again, if you follow it, you can see it's not too complicated. Now, there are many things you can actually change. And first of all, just know that the emitter has different uh, options. But again, to know this one, you can just play with it. It's very simple playing with the numbers, changing and see how this affects the overall results. Remember that you can rotate the emitter if you want it to face a different direction. And once you get this, uh, remember dropping the face onto the patch editor and then connecting it to the mouth open. Again, if you are searching for something, the mouth open, multiply, you can right click here and start typing something and you'll get it for so MU, this is multiply, a mouth, I just tap M A U, I get mouth open and adding into the patch, you can either double click it or add patch. So this is a very simple way to use actually a very uh, popular uh, trigger event in Spark Air Studio that is regarding a demo, either mouth open or mouth openness. And of course, Spark Air recognizes much more, not just mouth open, also blinking. And regarding blinking in the next video, I think it's the next video, I'm going to show where you can use blink to create really cool things. And this is actually will really be based for cool effects, even games that you create. I may create many games uh, based on uh, blinking and mouth opening. Uh, you can check it out on wowfilters.com uh, on Instagram. And uh, so <laughs> even with this, you can create games, but again, again more interactivity later on. <coughs> so I recommend going over what I did here in this video so you can remember and replicate it. So a simple a patch editor, very few nodes, one particle system, one image connected, a few simple changes to the emitter properties in order to create something cool. Hearts coming out of this one. So that's it. That's it for, for this tutorial. Again, if you have question regarding this uh, lesson, please uh, leave a comment in the description of this video and I'll do my best to answer your question uh, as fast as possible. Uh, again, I will try to in each video to make uh, things that are slightly more advanced. But don't rush, don't rush doing things. First, make sure that you understand this thing. And the reason I make this one, because I know people like creating things with uh, uh, interactive things that react to users' facial gestures. Um, so this is mouth open. It's a very popular one that people use. <coughs> but of course, we can use other things as well. Uh, but I'll show it to you in another video so you can see uh, how it works. Uh, so that's it. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, I'm um, just starting making tutorials. And if you like them, if you want, <coughs> I'll get more motivated. Uh, if you subscribe and like this video and comment, uh, <coughs> so it will motivate me to make more of those. Uh, that's it. Don't forget to subscribe uh, and press the bell button to get notified uh, when I release new videos. Uh, so it's important to press this bell button because if not, you're not going to get notified. Uh, so that's it. I see you in the next tutorial. Uh, try to think of another cool thing. It probably will be related to blinking because blinking is very popular on Instagram and Facebook filters. So I'll probably make this in uh, the next video. Thanks for watching. I see you in the next video. Bye everyone. Bye bye.